always believed in being a PAC supporter from my very first insurance position that I had. It was instilled in us that PAC was one of the things that you just did as an agent to make sure that you were supporting your your profession um, and your livelihood. As the government affairs chair this year, I see now how the money that people actually give to the IPAC is supporting our legislators that we have, that we have relationships with, that give them the ability to actually fight for us on our key issues that we might have, whether it's insurance or just regulatory issues that we have. Whether Democrat or Republican, us being able to have relationships with candidates that are aligned on our key issues is our main focus and that's what we want to be able to support with our IPAC contributions. I think it's scary sometimes when people look at the amounts that are available to contribute on the IPAC form, but it, it can be as simple as starting off with $10 a month. Um, we want to make sure that it's not anything that's prohibited to anybody and I know Sometimes you think, I probably can't afford to do this and get on it, but how much money do we spend at Starbucks every month? How much money do we spend on a, an extra cheesecake every month? I mean, there are some things that we can actually say, I'm gonna give to my profession and make sure that it's gonna be here in the long standing um, and, and start out small. It's something that you can definitely build on, but you will always be able to see the impacts of what the IPAC donation can do. I am Anna Bailey with Allotate Insurance Services in Charlotte, North Carolina, the chair of the IIANC's Governmental Affairs Committee, asking you to give to IPAC in 2020. Thank you.